All right, here is our our next project. <coughs> it is a not very small Arvin table radio. Look at the size of that thing. I mean to say, but it is a beauty. Look at the size of that dial on there. That thing is good six inches across. It's three band, got, got broadcast low and high short wave. Not much on the low short wave. Uh, the 5.5, 5.75 megahertz you'll find a little bit. Um, somewhere down around 2.5, 2.7 there's a, a station. But most of the stuff nowadays you'll find in, um, in uh, 6 to 6.5, the 49 meter band, and then there will be some in the 7 to 7.5, some amateur stuff. And then around 11 to 12, there's some more shortwave stuff. And another few at 14 to 15. But other than that, there's not much anymore. I mean, back in the old days, back in the 60s, you would find hundreds of stations on that shortwave. Literally hundreds. It, it just was every little bit of movement of the dial, there was another station of some kind or another. And that, that's all gone now. So everything now is done via satellite radio. And um, they, they don't broadcast anymore. Yeah, broadcast station is very expensive to operate. Just, just now, it, extremely expensive, in fact, compared to satellite. Okay. This, this radio is un, untouched. I don't think anybody's messed with it. So that means that we're probably in pretty good shape. Um, as far as uh, getting it going, it's, it's going to be pretty pretty straightforward. Now, this has an original cord on it, but it is very clearly, uh, it's, it's falling apart. This is not one of the ones that we can save. Alright, cut that off of there and into the junk with it. Okay, speaker. There's no sticker. The sticker that was in here is gone. So telling what model of radio this is is pretty much um, pretty much impossible. Now that whole thing can come out of there. Okay. Now we can unplug the speaker. Oh doke. Alright, let's do a quick ohmmeter check. Alright, times ten, and we will look at the field. Okay. Alright, looks like... Aha! Field has got reading. Okay. Okay. All three wires have got reading. Come on, sweetie. Come on. Yes, little baby. Yes, little kitty. Oh, you little kitty. You want to be... You want to be on the camera? Huh? You want to say hi to everybody? Yes? Yes, baby. Aw. Yes, are you a sick kitty? You a sick kitty, huh? You threw up your lunch? Poor little baby. Yes. Aw. She beautiful, isn't she a beautiful kitty? <laughs> you sit right there and I'm going to get you a snack stick. She threw up her lunch today. I don't know why. Cats are bad about that. They, they throw up. There's that knob that was broken off the front. That's no big deal. Oh, this is going to have to be sandblasted. Now, the speaker. Okay. Alright. Now, I've got to be careful of this. The speaker is in perfect condition. I don't want to punch my hand through it. we got a good field coil and a good audio transformer. So, we don't want to have any accidents. Okay. 
Now the cabinet is going to have to be touched up. It doesn't need refinishing. It just needs touch up. There's a little bit of glue work needs to be done right there. But overall the cabinet is in absolutely excellent condition. Let's take a look underneath. This has to be sandblasted though. It's a mess. Okay. What have we got underneath? Oh, look at that dial. The dial is perfect. Some of these, the dial is paper and it, it you know, it's all crumbly and stuff. This one, the dial is plastic, so it's perfect. Oh, look at that. Oh, that is just beautiful. That is beautiful. It, it's got some very good capacitors and it. it's got a lot of oil capacitors in it. These are paper capacitors, but they're oil paper. And that means that they, they are probably going to be good. Which will have a, a significant um, uh, effect on um, how, how long it takes us to recap it. Very clearly, somebody put this fuse holder in here. That was not original. The electrolytics are all junk. They, they have to go. A8. We'll have 6A8 for the converter. Okay, there's 6K7, yeah. Okay, 6K7, those are the RF tubes. There's the 6A8, okay. Like I was saying. Okay. I'm just going to run those through the tube tester just to make sure they're okay. They probably are, but you never can tell. A 6Q7, that's our detector and audio amp. Okay, and then this is going to be another 6K7 IF tube. It's just very, very standard um, lineup. Okay, now the tuning is complete garbage. It is tight. So all of this is going to have to be cleaned up. Alright, the first thing that's going to have to be done is going to be the um, Sandblasting. I've got to take this outside and sandblast it because um, it's got a, a scum on it. I can't leave any glass in there while we're sandblasting. Uh, sandblasting completely disintegrates glass. Here we go. Okay, just looking at it, it looks good. It, it may be that all the pilot lights are good in the thing. Okay, that gets all the glass out of here. Okay, I'm going to take it out and do the sandblasting. I'm not going to do that on camera. It's not, not anything to watch. But you can see what it looks like. It's just got a kind of a crud on it. Okay, everything's covered with crud. Look at, look at the transformer. It's just, okay? Watch what it looks like when I bring it back in. Now, we have sandblasted and coated the radio. Look at that. Look at how nice that looks. See how nice and beautifully clean we painted the transformer. You know, we sandblasted all the, the old paint which was flaking off. The rust. All the rest of the chassis we had all that... Uh, that gooey powder on it, it's all sandblasted off. Okay, these have that, that goop on the top. That's all sandblasted off and clean. And then everything is coated with clear lacquer, which, which makes it to where the, the chassis will never uh, corrode or anything like that. Next thing we got to do, we've got to free up that dial. <clears throat> the, it, it, it just is so tight. It, it just absolutely is no way. I mean, it's gummed up totally. Go ahead and put this up under here. I'm going to just spray that. Put some glasses on so I don't spray my eyes. It's, it's a lot of it is gun. Oh my gosh, that is that's terrible. Okay, we're gonna have to open that up and get to it. 
Wow. Boy, did that make a difference. There we go. Very, very difficult one to get out. Okay, it's good. It's good. Okay. Looks like we may be in good shape on these pilot lights. I got some more down in there. Okay. I tell you what, um, it, we're going to have real trouble if we have to get them out of there. So I'm going to unsolder the connections and we'll just test them electrically. Okay, that one's burned out. Okay, it looks like we've got two burned out ones. Damn it. Okay, how do I get them out of there? There. See, what they have a, a rubber gasket in there, and what happens is that rubber gasket gets hard as a rock. So when you push down on the bulb, you can't get it to, you can't get it to rotate. Okay, let's see. There we go. Okay. I don't know if this is the good one or the bad one. I have no idea. Okay, that's a good one. Okay, so this one here, I'm gonna I'm gonna light it up. It looks like it's dirty. It looks like it's it's black, got blackened. Let's see what it looks like. That ain't gonna matter. Not gonna matter. Okay, that one's okay. <coughs> Where's this? These other two, what? I 
thought I saw a spark, but it wasn't. It's just a flash of light. Okay, I got to get these other bulbs out of here. They're not. Um, was good. Okay. I may have to uh, okay. there we go. All right. Let's see what happens if I try applying cutters. I can get a better hold on it. The rubber thing in there, the little rubber gasket, is hard as cement, which makes it to where you can't compress it to get the bulb to go in. This is the kind of thing that really makes an old radio repair into a nightmare. See, that snap ring has to come out of there. Now we can pull this out. Okay, very good. Okay, that gives us access to this nightmare. Same problem as before. The rubber in there is hard as a rock. Okay, let me see if I can get them out of there. See, in the bottom there, there's a rubber washer in there that provides the, the uh, compression. And that rubber washer has turned into uh, concrete. It, it's hard as a rock. So what I'm going to have to do, I either have to literally machine those out of there, just grind them out in any way possible and replace the whole socket, or I have got to somehow get it out to where I can put another rubber washer in there. Okay, I'm going to just take the take the uh, socket off of there. Okay. Okay, I'm going to just take it. Okay. Oh, God. Hopefully I can do all this and still keep the wire. The wire screws up. I'll have to put some uh, shrink tubing on it to make it make it okay. All right. Here we have little washers that we've made out of rubber. They're not perfect, but they'll do. Um, I could have made up a punch that would have cut them exact, but you know, it, it, it isn't that important. They'll squish correctly. Okay, so what I have to do is put that over here. All right. Okay, then you take one of these little things okay this is the front side okay all right see and then that fits there like that and this pushes up inside here. This has to be flat. Okay. Alrighty. 
Now, if I put a bulb in there, it should work. Okay, we got a bulb. Oh my, yeah. See, it has a little pressure to hold it. Okay, there's one of them. Okay. <clears throat> All right, okay, and we take one of our little rubbers. All right. All right. Okay, and then we have a bulb. All right, I need a piece of shrink tubing on there. Okay. <clears throat> That's perfect. All right, and I got one more. Okay, now let's test it. All right, connect one to ground. All right, and here, one, two, three. Okie dokie. Right. Okay, that's going to do it. That looks really good. Okay, that takes care of all the light bulbs. All right, we've got connections here. Okay, <clears throat> that takes care of all the uh, dial lights. Okay, it cannot be put in wrong. It has little cutouts and notches that match up with the uh, tabs. Yeah, that's good. Okay, now we have this little ring here, and that catches the plastic and holds it back so that it doesn't hang up. Doesn't hang up on the on the dial as it rotates. If you lose that, you really have some trouble getting your dial to turn freely. Okay, this is our main dial. Um, okay, that needs to be bent in just a little bit. <clears throat> it has to just barely skim. There we go. You want it to just barely skim the plastic, it has to be just enough where it doesn't touch, and yet you don't want it to stick out too much, otherwise the second hand will whack into it when it rotates around. Okay. Okay. Second hand goes on here. 
Okay. All right. We tighten that little screw. All right, now what we do, okay, it's sticking out too far. It's going to whip into it, so I have to have to bend it. <laughs> okay, no problem. Okay, now what I have to do is take this, go all the way around. Okay, that's 550. So now we should have the main dial. Okay, the second hand should be at 12, and the main dial should be at 550. Okay. That's good and tight. Okay, now as we go around. It, it it can't stick out too much or it catches it. All right, put it back down again and realign it. Okay, that's all the way up. All right, that should be up at 18. Okay, put it right there. Okay, go back around. That's it. Uh oh. Something is something is not <clears throat> not kosher here. <coughs> okay. That's it. Okay. Okay, that takes care of the dial and the um, and the light mechanism. That's set to the right position. And now we have to get the cord that goes down to the um, down to the tuning knob. All right. I guess I should put it through there. Okay. Okay. Okay, we've got a problem there. I've got a further than that. Okay, we got no trouble there. This, this stuff has to be bent back all the way. Okay, that takes care of the dial and the dial cord. Okay? Alright, the 25 volt one.
goes to pin 8 on the power tube. Okay, that's the cathode bypass. That's why it's 25 volts. Cathode bypass. Doesn't have to be high voltage. But these other two are main power supply and they have to be 450 volts. That's good. Okay. So I don't want that flopping around. Okay, I got a ground right here. Okay, let's put that on there. Now that flops around, so what I'm going to do, <coughs> I'm going to get a um, nice big resistor here. What I've got is a 3.9 meg resistor, and I'm just going to take it, <coughs> I'm going to solder one half of it onto this old condenser here, the old capacitor, and okay. And I'll put the other end onto here. See that 3.9 meg resistor won't have any current to speak of through it. It'll it'll be very low. That's that uh, whatever the B plus is. And yet um, it'll tie that down so that see that doesn't move now. And just trim extra jump off. See, and that one's solid, and that one's solid. Okay, that takes care of those two electrolytics. Now the 25 volt one, I need to get all right, and the ground just goes right over here to ground terminal, and I'll just stick that right on there. That takes care of that one. Now I got another one over here. Okay, that one doesn't make any difference. That's a, a line capacitor. I'm going to take a look at it and see what it does. Megs, it's high. Fuse. Okay, I want to look at this fuse. What, what did they put in there for a fuse? Were they smart or were they dumb? If you put the wrong value fuse, you may as well just put a piece of wire. So we're going to look at it and see what they put. Oh my gosh! <laughs> what good does it do to put it in there? It's a 5 amp fuse! A 5 amp fuse for that little transformer! Oh my god! Oh! <laughs> oh, I don't have any smaller fuses. I'll put this 5 amp one in here. That'll work! Amp fuse. Oh my god. All right, let's see. We want a uh, one amp, well, one amp um, slow blow. One and a half amp. Okay, that'll be okay. Okay, next thing we're going to do, we need a cord. How to put a cord on it. Okay, now that's what we're going to use. <clears throat> Got a nice cord here, nice plug. And we use some of this uh, reproduction. This isn't a uh, valuable radio. This radio is only worth $100. Restored and working, it, it might be worth $100. So I'm just going to use this reproduction cord. It's not like that. Uh, not like that cross sleeve, it's a $500 radio.
Okay, see that gets us beautiful old-fashioned original. That's an original plug there from back in the back in the 30s. All right. Doop. There you go. There. Okay. Very good. Okay. Must not be on. How do we turn it on? Okay. Okay. Eight watts with nothing on there. Oh, it's it's pilot lights. Okay. Pilot lights. Okay. <clears throat> okay, the next thing we got to do, get on the other side, there's more condensers to change. Sit there. Sit there. Okay, on this side, now, we've got those oil capacitors down inside there, but we also have got these here that are, these are just junk papers. And I am betting that those are going to be leaky. I have a bad feeling here. I have a very bad feeling. I'm going to measure. We got one of the oil condensers right here. Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh no! They're they're junk. They are junk. Oh my god! I, I saw this one here. It, it has one of the wires is cut loose. The other one is goes to ground. This one is cut loose, and <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh no! What that means is all of these down, all these others are, are no good. I'm gonna have to measure them. And <clears throat> probably have to change them all out. I got another one down under here. It's cut out. Somebody's been through here. Somebody's been through here. It's possible that these ones that the guy put in are still good. Okay. No problem at all. No problem at all. Goes way up past 20 megs. So these these will be good. But all these other ones are shot. Okay, they're gonna have to be uh, they're gonna have to be replaced. Okay. That looks good. Okay. That, that's 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 gonna be Good. Having these ones that this guy replaced be good is okay. Okay, this one. Oh, I want to test that one. I, I've got the ohmmeter and I'm just taking one end loose, measuring it with the ohmmeter. That one ain't going to come loose. Okay, here, I'll try this out. There we go. Okay, and I got another one right here. Okay. I got it set on the high ohm scale and it'll read up past 20, 20 meg ohms. We want, we want these condensers 
Okay, that reads 5 meg ohms. I, I don't like it. If, if it doesn't go up past 20 megs, I'm not going to leave it. Okay, this one is no good. It's, it reads 5 megs. God, is that a resistor? Oh, that's a resistor. I was going to say, that thing's reading nothing. It's a, it's a low ohm resistor. Okay, this is going to be a um, 0.05. Point one. Okay, point one at 400 volts. Point one. Point one. 630 volts. That'll do. That'll do. Okay. I don't know why. These I ordered from Mouser. They're about 75 cents a piece. If you order 50 of them at a time, they're about 75 cents a piece. I order the 0.05, I get 100 at a time, and the, the other values I get 50 at a time. Come on, baby! Come on, kitty! Yes. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Come here, baby. Come here. Come here. Say hi to everybody. Here, say hi to everybody. Huh? Here. <laughs> I know you're ready for Din Din, huh? You ready for Din Din? You're not going to look up at the ca camera? Yeah, there you go. You <laughs> kitty. Okay. I'm going to get another one right here. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to cut here. Yeah. All right. Now, this will take the place of that one. Brand new yellow. Okay. Good. Okay. That takes care of all of them in there. Now I'll get another one up here. Okay, I'm going to cut. I'm going to cut it loose. Okay, what do we get? One mag. Oh, wait a minute. I may be doing that wrong. Eh. Ah. See, that wire may go through. So I have the... Uh, Nope. 500K. All right. Let's see what it says. 0 0.05 at 200. Okay. Now that one is very, very critical right there. That one there goes from the HEC line and um, to ground. If you have a leaky capacitor on the HEC line, you're going to have no HEC. That radio will not change AGC if you've got leaky capacitor on there. Because that whole AGC line is very high impedance. Up into mega ohms. Usually it's one to two mega ohm impedance. So if you've got a, a half a meg leakage in a capacitor, that cuts your AGC voltage to a fourth of what it should be. And that, that radio won't uh, respond. So you definitely got to check those. Make sure they're perfect. Okay, we got over here, we got an O2 at 600. Let's see. 
that looks original. <coughs> Okay, it's got 10 megs. Um, it's in a, in a bad place. It's volume control. So if you have leakage on that one, the grid bias on the first audio can be screwed up. Okay, we'll get a we'll get a O2. Screwed up bias on that audio tube, first audio tube, it adds a bunch of distortion to the radio. You'll have distortion. Radio will probably play, but you'll have distortion. So what you want is to have that capacitor to be good. If you got something like that, leaks it. The thing leaks at uh, two megs. That that's that's um, that's not a good idea to leave it in there. It probably would uh, work, but um, you get some distortion. Usually, the little, little mylar capacitors and it, it has infinite resistance there and be okay. All right, that takes care of all of that. <coughs> Okay, now that takes care. That one's not used. That one's not used. That one is checked okay. That one's not used. Okay, that one's not used. I see another one. Another one down in there. Oh boy, there's two more. Two more of them. Okay. I got ground, and then that one goes over here. Okay, this is a cathode bypass capacitor. Alright, these are not critical at all. Cathode bypass capacitors. They have only a few volts across them, and um, if they leak at 100K even, it, it won't hurt anything. Let's just see what, what it looks like. Okay. Okay, this one's got a one meg leakage. That's not enough. It's it's not gonna hurt a thing. Not gonna hurt a thing. It's 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 parallel with a four hundred ohm resistor. So a, <laughs> a, a one meg resistor parallel with a with that is not gonna hurt a bad gum thing. So we're gonna leave it in there. We're going to leave it there. Okay. Okay, this this is not good. Okay. Okay, this one here. Okay, this one here goes to the AGC line. Okay, that has to be a good condenser. It has to be in the mega ohms. 20 megs. If it isn't 20 megs, it out goes out of here. Oh my gosh, it's one meg ohm. That's junk. Absolute junk. Okay, out of here it goes. Okay, 05. Okay, 0 0.05. <clears throat> okay, and that goes to here. You may wonder how in the world I'm doing this without a schematic and knowing what all these wires are. If you once you've done 500 to 1,000 radios, you you know what all the stuff is. You can just look at it and tell. It, it just you know you look at person's face. You can tell what their ears are and their nose and their eyes. You've seen a person's face a hundred times, thousand thousand times. Well, the same thing goes with a radio. Once you've seen a radio. 500 to 1,000 times, you just look at it, you can tell what each component is used for. You don't need a schematic. And, um, you know, that's, that's where, where you get, get uh, experience comes in. There are some times I have to go get a schematic, but, um, but most of the time, you know, I can just sit there and look at it and tell 
and tell what each part is because you, you know what the pins are in the tube. The two pins are all uh, constant. You know what those are. You, you memorize that quick. That's the first thing you learn is the two pin numbers. And once you know what the two pin numbers are, then um, you know what goes to it. And it's very easy to, um, to to tell. Okay, that's it. It's recapped. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, no, no. I've got an electrolytic here. I got electrolytic over here. Okay. I've got one right here and I've got one right here. Okay, those are those have to be changed. They are they are junk. All electrolytics are junk. Okay. Well, 8 mic at 475. Okay, and this one's 25 volts. This is a 25 volt right here. So it's a cathode or something. But this one here is 8 mics at 475. That's got to be a um, that's got to be high voltage. Okay, we need a 400 volt 400 volt capacitor on there. Okay, these that's the connection. All right, let me find a. Okay. Okay, and then this one just goes right down there and solders onto it, and that's got it. <laughs> Pin eight to ground, and it's it's a uh, it's cathode uh, cathode bypass. I can't get to that. Okay, I'm just going to cut it cut it out. Just cut it out. All right, there. Okay, we've got all the tubes put in and um, everything wired, connected, and hooked up. And um, we've got audio, but we're getting nothing. We're getting nothing whatsoever out of the radio. The front end is not alive. What I'm going to do first, I'm going to take the signal generator and I'm going to check from the antenna, wherever it is, through the switch to the grid of the first RF amplifier. When we, we don't need the power on to do that. When we put a signal on the antenna, we should see it on the, on the grid of the first RF. Okay? I got the scope probe on the grid of the first RF. And I'm connecting the signal generator to the um, antenna input. Okie doke. And I'm going to set the generator to modulated. And I want Okay, 950, and we're about 950 on the dial. All right, so now I am not seeing a thing. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put the scope on the signal generator and see that we do have a signal. Okay, this is our signal that we're feeding in. It's a modulated, um, a modulated signal with the carrier at 950 kilohertz and um, modulation that somewhere's around um, oh, 400 hertz or something like that. Let's see. 1000 hertz. Okay. So we've got signal there on the antenna. Okay. I'll go over here. Alright. I'm not seeing a thing. Oh. Oh, oh, I was in the wrong, wrong band. <laughs> well, wrong band or not, it doesn't make any difference. Of course it doesn't make any difference. Whoa.
it's pretty clear the switch is dirty. All right, power off. Power off. Okay, switch is dirty. Okay, let's unplug the speaker. What a what a nightmare. Okay, the switch that's the problem is down through there. All right, let's get some cleaner. Okay. Okay, the top section here is for the the light bulbs. It is working fine. All right, let's go with the first section. running all over the place. Give me this rag. Oh! <laughs> it, it's dry cleaning fluid is what's in there, so it's it's harmless. It'll uh, completely evaporate to nothing. If you get the stuff at the auto supply, you can get a can of it for about four dollars. But if you go buy professional switch cleaner at the electronics store, you spend $9.95 for, for a can that's smaller. The, the can you get for 10 bucks is smaller than the, the, the same stuff at the auto supply. So, yeah, you got to watch out or you get taken to the cleaners. All right. The switch should be dried out by now. Let's warm her up. Antenna connected. Ah. <laughs> you got to plug the speaker in. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right. Try again. Try again. It's a short wave. Okay. It needs a complete alignment that doesn't have any gain. It doesn't have any gain at all. So we'll have to do a total alignment from one end to the other. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is the IF strip. Okay, to do that, we set our tuning dial to the lowest frequency on the broadcast band. We turn the power on, get that thing warming up. All right, that's all the way down on the um, broadcast band. Then we take the signal generator and we connect it to the antenna. Okay, and we take the frequency down to 456 kilohertz. I have a suspicion that we have a burned out coil. The two antenna terminals get connected directly through the switch onto these coils here, input coils. So I should read those coils. Okay, go to band two. Got it. Band three. Got it. Broadcast band. No! Ha! Ah, ah, ah! Input coil is burnt out on the broadcast band. Oh, wow. Excellent. Really wonderful. Oh, just wonderful. Okay, that's why we're not getting any signal through this thing. See, when I put the signal directly on the grid of the um, RF amplifier tube, it comes booming through. But when I go to the input uh, of the antenna, nothing. 
which indicates that that input coil is open and sure enough it has infinity ohms. All right, where is that? Where is that coil? Okay. Now, this is the antenna coming through here, so the input coil is in the front section here. Okay, this one here is the broadcast band. Okay, if I get on there with a meter, I should be able to read from the antenna terminal and we get it, okay? Something, something is screwy here with the antenna circuit. Okay, that one should go straight to the grid of that tube. We, we've got a break here somewhere. Okay, I'm on a grid of the first RF, and I should be able to go to here and see it, but I do not. Okay, if I switch the band to the next one, I see it. To the other band, I see it. But if I go to broadcast band, there's no connection. Oh boy, what? Where in the world would it go? The coil is good. <laughs> Between here and here. Ooh! Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, I see. Alright, I think I see what it is. <laughs> Switch contact. Okay. Switch contact is not touching. Now I'm going to bend. I'm going to bend that switch contact down in some way. What I've got to do, I've got to pull up on one side and push down on the other. So I'll need a, I'll need a screwdriver. Now, I've got it pried up and I'm going to bend downwards. <laughs> okay, what it was is the switch contact was just riding just above the contact. So what I did was I just pried up on the uh, back and just bent it down so that now it presses firmly against the um, against the contact. Okay, so it means the coils were all good. It was just that switch. Just that switch. Okay, let's get on with the task at hand. Power on. All right, 455. Okay, we've got the signal generator set for the 455, 455 kilohertz for the IF, and we've got a signal going in. Okay, now I'm going to take each of these trimmers here on the IF cans and pick them up. I don't know what that is. See, it just dropped in, in level. Now it came up. Something screwed. Oh, that's crazy. They actually put the hot part of the circuit on the adjustment screw. If you can imagine such a dumb thing, uh, maybe a smaller screwdriver will have smaller capacity. This is a very small screwdriver. Okay, it takes care of the IF cans. 6A8 tube seems to be uh, weak. It's, it's dropping out of oscillation. The oscillator section is what goes in these things. The, the emission gets low. All right, I'm going to go ahead and test this. All right, the 6A8 tests very hot. It reads almost double. So that is not the problem. All right, everything is ready to go again. Power on. Okay, now I want to get the scope. I'm going to put the scope over here. See, I'm looking at the oscillator, local oscillator. Okay, it started okay that time. It could be the tuning condenser, but it's not very likely. All right.
All right, let's go on up to the top end of the band. It, it looks good. Looks like we don't have to do much tuning at all. Okay, let me get. And your dog's You're getting a signal on it. Just using the signal generator as an antenna. Okay, here's 1700. 1600 on a generator. Okay. All right, 1700, 1700. Right on the money, right on the money. Okay, and then the bottom end we already did. Okay, we'll go all the way on down to 600. Okay, we'll go back down to 600. Right on the money. Okay, that takes care of that one. Now, the next band is, okay, that's 1.9 megahertz. Okay, let me see. Get up on a higher band. Twink. On the button. On the button. Okay, that's reading 12, and we're reading 11.6. All right, that's it. That's right on. It's 11.97 and we're reading 12. Okay, that's good. Alrighty. Very good. The set is tuned. It's got some good sensitivity. Okay, the next thing that we have to do is the cabinet. We've got the broken place on the uh, cabinet glued. Just this side here has pulled loose. All right, now this has to go back in there like that. Okay. Okie dokie. Now, that gets the entire cabinet. I've already washed it down with lacquer thinner. So uh, that got all the grease off of it. Now, before we coat it with um, stain, I need to take a piece of sandpaper and sand it. what we're gonna fill it and sand it that'll be good enough okay we just got plain old cheap dap wood filler here no expensive stuff We're just going to let that go ahead and harden, and then sand it down even. That'll be good enough for this radio. It's just a hundred dollar radio, so I'm not going to go to the trouble of piecing in pieces of uh, veneer and stuff. Uh, it's just not worth the bothering. All we're doing here is breaking the glaze on the top layer of finish so that the uh, stain will uh, stain it good. We leave it glazed and then the stain is just on the surface. And it 
peel off. All right, we're going to do it with dark walnut. Plain cheap stuff from the hardware store. Okay, just got a piece of felt and I'm just going to go ahead and first I'm going to do the hard to get part right here. This is going to be a beautiful radio. <laughs> Even though it's a beautiful radio, it's, it's not an expensive radio. This radio will be a hundred dollar radio when it's done. Just a hundred dollars. It, it will not go... Nothing... Nothing like a name brand radio. If it was the same radio but a Zenith, it would be um, three, four hundred dollars. But uh, being a, an offbeat brand like Arvin, it just, yeah. it's, it's nowhere near as bad as a Philco. Philco is the worst. You, you've got Philco, they, they made, oh god, it's hard to imagine how many radios Philco made. It, it just, oh my goodness did they make a lot. And that makes them to where, where they don't have much collectible value at all. See, the idea that it has all the, the original finish on it uh, made it to where we didn't have to do a tremendous amount of work. If we had to strip this thing down to refinish it, it would have been a massive job. Stripping all the old fi finish off of it and then um, restaining it, you know, it just... Oh, it would not have, it would have been an all day job. All day job. All right, now I'm going to set this out in the sun and let it bake to dry. Next thing we got to do is get this dial polished up. Okay, I can't get the glass out. There's a, a, a steel wire that's pressed into a groove there, and it is in there so tightly that I'm afraid I'm going to break the glass if I force it. So I'm not going to risk it. I'm just going to go ahead and clean it the best I can while it's in there. It, it's going to be okay. I'm just taking fine steel wool and just going around there. To keep this from tarnishing again, I'm going to have to coat it with lacquer. Alright, so what I do, first I'm going to put a little bit of stain on there just to go ahead and color it. Okay, this is just the same stuff we used on the cabinet, dark walnut. Okay, I'm just going to take the same piece of felt, get just a little bit of stain on it, and I'm just going to go on that brass. And that gives it a beautiful golden tone. Now I've got to leave that overnight to dry, and then tomorrow we'll spray it with lacquer to, to seal it. Okay. All right. The um, the lacquer, uh, I mean the stain has dried on here. We're now going to take clear lacquer and we're going to spray it to uh, make sure that the stain doesn't get wiped off. Uh, I'm not going to mask off the glass because the glass is easy to clean once we're once we're through. Okay, now we're going to let that dry and then we'll take a solvent and we'll clean the glass off and we'll be ready to install it. All right, now we've got our grill cloth. Okay, here's the thing it mounts on and this is the grill cloth we're going to use. Okay, so we put Okey-dokey. Now we let that dry for a few minutes and then stick it. Right there. Okay. 
Now, I'm going to pull very hard. I'm just stretching it to, to make sure it isn't going to be flopping around. This way. Go ahead. Okay, I'm gonna stick this side. Take that one and pull. Okay. Pull. Pull. Okay. Okay. See that's nice and solid here. Okay, now we have to get these holes to go through. Alright, to do that we take a nail and we heat it up with the torch. Red hot. You don't want to try doing it with a drill bit. It'll twist that cloth around it. All right, we got it red hot. We just shove it through. See, and that makes this perfect holes without any um, any any um, loose threads on them. If you try drilling through with a drill, it'll leave loose threads and it'll catch on. Look at that cabinet, though. Isn't that beautiful? Oh my goodness! See, in this place up here. You, you know, you don't notice it. You know, it's got a little funny place there, but it, it just, it's, it's a, a, a character mark. You know, it's, it's a yeah, character mark. Okay, and... <laughs> All right. Now. Okay. I think is a problem. Okay, it needs to come up by a quarter of an inch. There used to be spacers under it. So I've got to get some pieces of um, pieces of plywood to put here to space it up by a quarter of an inch. Okay? Okay, I'm going to stick some glue Okay, that will go right there. Okay, and some more glue. Okay. Okie dokie. Now, that gives us a little bit of height there. Okay, this has to go. See, what happened was those rubber bushings that hold this thing had sagged down, so we have to bring it up a little bit. <clears throat> and. All right. Oh, the washer's uh, stuck to the wood underneath. <laughs> we didn't want lose it. Ah, good enough. Okay, one of them goes back in the drawer then. Okay, that gets the chassis put in. All right, now this repaired speaker wire. Okay, let's try again. Ha ha! Okie doke. That gets the speaker taken care of. Okay, bug catchers. There's one, two, three, there's five holes, but I've only got three bug catchers. Got the actual original knobs. That is amazing. We've got all the original knobs. One, two. Try to back today. Order the three requests out of pack. It'll be at your door in three days or less. Take it morning and evening just like I do, and I promise you. Oh, the cheese guarantee, my DNA. Oh, volume 
control pot is got an open spot on it. <laughs> oh shit. Alright. Alright, let's see what we can do. Yeah. I don't like it though. What can you what can you do? It, it, it just, uh... <laughs> I don't see anything wrong with it whatsoever. Okay. okay, it's got to be something else. It's something with that pot. I mean, it's just the slightest turn and it goes from zero to full volume. Oh, you can go. Come, come on. Everybody's looking at you. Everybody's going to look at you and see you. Hmm? See up here? Look at that. Huh? Say hi to everybody. <laughs> You want to go down, huh? You want to go down? I'm going to come get you something to eat in a minute. So, okay, let me think what could be wrong. What? Okay, the, the, the problem is the volume control has no effect. Okay? That would indicate a bad volume control. I mean, the signal comes in and goes to the top of the volume control. The bottom of the volume control goes to ground. And the center goes to the audio stage. So when you turn the pot, you go from ground, which is no signal, up to signal. But it looks like we just go the slightest bit off of ground, and it goes to full blast. <laughs> Ah! Oh, what a dork. What a dork. Remember there was a 8 mic at 475 and a um, 25 at 25 volts. Well, I did the 475, but I didn't do the 8 mic at 25. The cathode is floating, so it has full signal on it. <laughs> what a dork. What a dork. 25 at 50. Oh, hell. Oh, when you're good, you're good. When you're good, you're good. Boy, you can really make some good blunders when you're good. <laughs> oh, my goodness gravy. See, see, if the cathode is not grounded, it has signal on it. The grid will be grounded, and the cathode will have the signal. Doesn't matter. You can have a cathode drive or grid drive. Doesn't matter. Either way, it'll give you plenty of signal. If it would have worked without the capacitor, then hell, why would they bother to put it in there? We could we could save money. We could just um, not put it in there at all. But clearly, there are very few parts in here that you could eliminate and have the radio continue to work properly. Heater up. Okay, now she should work. Now it should work. I want to stick my fingers in here. 400 volts all over the place. See, now we don't have anything. See, it goes to zero. Does your retirement plan include an exit strategy? just trying to save 50 cents there by not putting that capacitor in there. The save 50 cents got caught. Let's see. Speaker. Okay, okay. Put that right on there. Okay. Juice on. Former Governor Jerry McAuliffe. The um, 
It buzz. It comes from these damn lights, these LED lights. If I shut those lights off, all of that buzz disappears. It, it, it's terrible the way these things make noise. Okay, uh, that's it. That's it. It works. That's the tone. Com slash shipping for GPS. Staples Connect. Okay, that's the tone. That's the volume. I don't think we got any um, shortwave stuff. We're at um, four in the afternoon. It's not a good time for shortwave. Está por radio en medio de la radio. Leave the reverse. That's at fourteen. Como el espacio deportivo. Fifteen and a half. Líder en información sobre tecnologías y comunicaciones. Sixteen. Controlar la pandemia del coronavirus. Eight. A little over twelve. A little under twelve. The ninety-five hundred. Okay. Very good. Oh my goodness, that's a beautiful radio. That is a beautiful radio. Okay, that's that's got it repaired.